Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if if there are any men that are going to join this at some point, and if you are a man who has joined this course, you guys will have this will be filed into the feminine and the masculine um, worksheets. And currently, since there's no men, I haven't created a lot of worksheets yet, but we've had some interest. So you guys are here. You will have this video at some point because hopefully we won't have to keep making these videos over and over again. All right. So big day today. Today is the day that we really sit in and decide. Now, you can't get this wrong. You can change this at any time, but really stepping in and creating a new identity. And the new identity is very important that your focal point is not coming from lack. So when you're creating a, your own reality, if you're creating your reality from lack, then you are actually creating reality from your ego. Okay, what I would like for you guys to do is spend a little bit of time before you work on this today in the worksheet that I just um, th that I just that I just put in your Facebook group, and it is uh, self concept becoming the magnetic feminine energy. All right, now, ladies, regardless of your sex sexual presence or preference, um, whether you're in a in a um, lesbian relationship or whatever whatever gender you are identifying with, I want you to really take a hard look at your physical body, all right, versus the gender that you feel safest in in your reality. Now, I know it's amazing lesbian couples that they take dual roles in the relationship. Like there's certain masculine qualities and certain feminine qualities. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like how you act in your relationship, whether you wear the pants or not. But what I'm talking about is where your desire and your self-concept um, is created out of, right? So I've been teaching a lot about this idea of scarcity mindset. None of you guys would be in this class, this this class or this course if you did not have a dominant scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset creates a body that does not feel safe. That is 100% the reason why your body does not look the way you want it to look. And it is the reason why you are having a hard time really connecting with yourself. Because when you are in a constant state of fight or flight, you do not access your frontal cortex, which is your third eye and your intuitive self, the real you. Now, the self-concept that we're going to be creating this week is going to change completely once you start learning how to imagineer. But we need a place to start. Okay, so it's like it's almost like a starting place. We do not want to start where you were in lack. That's why I gave you this worksheet, and again, it's not really a worksheet. Anything I give you guys is, is reflection work. I just want you to reflect on it. I want you to, to not like blow past it. I want you to read every bullet point because there might be a significant part of your personality that is not you. That could be the number one reason why you can't lose weight. All right. So this is going to be a little bit of a training on your divine feminine hormones, as well as how to create this self-concept. Now, again, you could be like, I don't even know how to be in my feminine. I've been in scarcity and I've been afraid my whole life and that's fine. There's a part of you that can imagine and fantasize about what that would look like and that's good enough, right? And all you actually have to do to, to find out how to be feminine is what would it be like if I was safe, admired, cared for, loved, if I knew I was the prize, if I knew I was, um, that my existence was enough. I, that I knew I didn't have to go out and earn that that it would come to me if I was in the right alignment with my energy. You see, so that's the mindset. So I've given you lists and lists and lists and lists. I've also given you a breakdown of exactly how we're going to move you back into your feminine energy in a safe way. You know, you're saying, well, how can I go back into my feminine if I have to be in an unsafe reality? But see, here's the thing. You've created an unsafe reality and unsafe relationships because of your self-concept. All right. So we work on the self-concept to create a safe environment on the inside, and then that will be reflected out. So I'm not asking you to get in your feminine energy and then go out and sh tell the world, oh, I'm the prize. You're not going to do any of that. Where, matter of fact, the less you say and do, the more feminine you are, because the feminine energy is the magnetic, which means that you're going to build it inside of you, just like you would a baby, and it's going to be born 
outside of you, or it's going to be born inside of you and you'll know exactly what action steps to take. So this is a very, very safe way. And this is the exact metaphor of the caterpillar, the cocoon and the butterfly, because the caterpillar always feels unsafe because it's slow. It's constantly in a gluttonous feast or famine. It's always checking its back for predators and it moves very slow in life and it has a very small world, okay, that it can get around to. It's it's basically just a survival instinct. It's just like this in, insect is just sur completely survival based, and it's you know it's it's eating, it's surviving, it's multiplying. That's about it, and that is what scarcity, like the template of our scarcity um, hologram, is here. It's very caterpillar. It's eat or be eaten, right? And so the where I'm taking you guys for these ninety days is into your cocoon, and in your cocoon is where you're going to change could be thousands of years of programming in your DNA. It could be, you know, your whole entire world that you could change. Now, the cool thing about it is, is your blood is connected to your entire bloodline. So when you shift, you actually clean up your generational stuff. You're giving your bloodline a gift by doing this work. By you going in and transforming yourself into the butterfly, that is going to be Prosper City. Okay, that's going to be where everything comes to you. It's a win-win situation. No one has to lose anything to get anything. You're not selfish if you choose you because by you choosing you, you create abundance for all. It's very, it's so much generosity. It's all intuition and it's very little action unless you desire it to be. So that is like what's coming for you. Now, where I want you to be and I want you to fixate on is the cocoon. Because in order for this to work, you cannot do this work in physical reality. You cannot. You cannot go out into the world and become a butterfly because there is a part of you that has to unbecome. And so during that transition, there is going to be a lot of old issues that might come to the surface, right? And yes, the outside will probably trigger it. But what I want to do is give you a way to, to channel that, shift that, change that, you know, opposite that so that you're not having to go on a healing journey, but you're looking at the art of duality, which is separation into non-duality, which is connection. And so if you have a connection mindset going into this, you're not going to feel like your whole world is falling apart because first of all, I'm going to tell you that your ego is going to feel that at times, but that is actually not happening. Your ego's job, as you know, I've probably said it in 10 classes so far, your ego's job is to run the subconscious programs, and that's what you're going to be interrupting. In order for you to become the real you, you have to stop being the old you, okay? Which means that your awareness that you've been creating all these years is going to really be the powerhouse of where you're moving. You cannot trust your ego. You cannot trust your feelings. You cannot trust your emotions. And you cannot trust what is happening on the outside of you because there's got to be a set change. There's got to be a cast change. There's got to be new props and and new worlds being built. And so if you see something that look that looks like it's crumbling, you might get triggered into loss when that actually is just being shift changed into something better. And I guarantee you that is what's happening. All right. I went through this for a whole year. And half the time, I didn't really know what was going on, actually two years. And it took me two years because I kept breaking my fall and I kept jumping back into old patterns and I kept avoiding certain things. And that's why when I put this course together for you guys, if you can follow it and understand that part of becoming great is feeling bad sometimes because you've been avoiding feeling bad, that if you could just feel the bad and replace it with a new intention, you wouldn't have to live in that bad place, but there might be things in your body that need to come to the surface because your hormones and your mind is all connected when awareness is not guiding, when the awareness is not the authority, when the real you is not telling and commanding who you are, then your body's in control and your body is filled with suppressed old emotion. It's filled with unprocessed data. It's filled with lack and guilt and shame and resentment and all that emotion because it has nowhere to go it creates a thinking platform for it's almost like energy and emotion is energy in motion and so if it does not have a place to go it will settle into the biological system in a different area that the body can actually contain it so like kidneys is the chi the life force energy but it is also the house of fear 
all right? Your liver is, is your detox organ, but it is also the house of anger. So if you cannot detox those angry feelings, they will stay in your body. If you cannot flow into faith, then you will hoard heater, you will hoard fear in your lower chakras. And that's exactly why you're sitting in the body that you're sitting in. It isn't really because of what you've eaten or how you've treated it, because the body is extremely adaptable and it is extremely malleable. So the only thing that has ever truly affected your body is your mind. All right. Because there are people who eat absolute trash and they're in perfect shape because their mindset is different. There are people who don't exercise at all and have perfect muscle. There are people that have no pain in their body and they don't take any vitamins or supplements. So it is 100% mind that causes the craving. Then you overeat and you blame the overeating. And then you get worried about trusting yourself around food. And now you've created a kind of sociopathic relationship with your own body where it's, it's you know, kind of a pain reward where I'll, I'll, I'll starve today and I'll eat tomorrow. And you start negotiating with this egoic separation within you. And then very soon your body becomes the master and you are very separated from what it actually needs or wants. And really all it needs is to regulate and rebalance. It does not need any sort of special diet or special exercise. Now I will tell you certain foods that will help lower depression as you're going through your journey, like when you're in the cocoon and it is, it is, um, you don't have to do it. Okay. But I will tell you if you want to be like me and just like, put your time in and do this, like have the rest of your life into freedom, then it will be easier and easier. And as soon as your self-concept starts to improve, your body is going to crave different food anyways. So let's say if sugar is one of your security blankets right now, or smoking or drinking is one of your security blankets right now, then I don't believe in taking the security blanket away from the inner child until the child feels safe, confident, and can self-soothe without an addictive property. So there's no judgment in anything that you guys are doing right now that is making you feel safe in your unsafe world because organically the child will stop needing certain things when it feels balanced. See, you're never you're never truly sick, you're just unbalanced. And every woman has always come to me and said, "Just how do I balance my hormones, right?" And how you balance your hormones is you change your thinking. How do you heal anything? You change your thinking. Okay, that's it. You change your thinking. Your thinking is the thing that triggers hormones. And I'll prove it right now. Okay, so think of, you could right now think of, um, think of something that you love unconditionally. All right. And as you're thinking of something, maybe it was your babies when they were little, notice that your heart naturally warms just by a thought. Okay, now think of something cringy, like a spider crawling on you or your kids having lice. And within about 30 seconds, you will become itchy, right? Because your thought, which is not happening, had a visceral response. Your hormone, ha your hormones had to release in order to, for you to feel itchy. Your hormones had to release in order for you to feel love. Okay, this is just, this is just biology. So every single thing you think is creating a hormonal reaction. So now let's take it back to a mindset. So mindset to me is like a group uh, it's a pattern of thinking. Okay. It's like you have, you, you see people who are just negative. Okay. They have a negative mindset. They have a complaining mindset. They have a blaming mindset. And so they have gathered thoughts that are chronic. That is what makes up your self-concept. Neville Goddard talks about it as the law of assumption, like what your, your brain is assuming already about what's happening. So if you're assuming that something is going to go bad this weekend, that is coming from a mindset. You don't know what's going to happen this weekend. It could be the best family gathering you've had. we got the holidays coming. What are you assuming about those family gatherings? What are you assuming about your finances this holiday season? You see? And so you're not really giving your future a chance when you are in assumption. Now, let me tell you why you do that. Okay. And I have it actually written out for you in your worksheet. You do this because when you live in scarce city, part of the indoctrination here they implanted this mindset. This is not a mindset you chose. Scarcity was not part of your reality until you finally just couldn't fight it anymore. You had to finally give into it because it was everywhere. 
it was in your parents, it was in your home, it was, you know, it was, it was everywhere. And it always felt like other people weren't living in scarcity, but yet somehow, because we take everything so personally, those first seven years, that it was personally happening to you. All right. And, and that's what puts us in, um, I'm alone and in scarcity. So it's not just like, okay, we're all in this together. Even though it does feel good when you realize other people are struggling because it's that communion. But at the same time, it feels like when you don't have what you want, you have something called a um, reticular activator. And that is when your brain, when you are desiring something, your brain goes looking for it. Okay. So this is why, like, if you want a new car and you finally start, you put it on your vision board. Now you're going to see that car everywhere. And now a lot of you are going to be like, oh, that's the sign is coming. But all that actually happened was, is your brain is now looking for that, that you are thinking about. This also happens in negative. If you start thinking conspiracy theories, you're going to see them. If you start getting scared about something, you're going to hear and witness it happening. Because your brain is like, is this what you want? Is this what you want? Is this what you want? Because it, it's trying to help you create a neural pathway to create a new subconscious program so that you can build that car from the inside out of you. But it's literally showing you on the outside as a mirror, is this what you want, right? And so if you have low self-esteem and you look in the mirror, right, you're going to see what you don't want because your, your brain is literally going to put you in bad lighting so you look worse. Because that's how this hologram is created. So if you're uh, if you have a habit of assuming or worrying or judging or comparing, you're not doing this from a self hate place. You're doing this because the indoctrination teaches you that it is the most responsible thing for you to do to be safe and cautious and aware and look at what could happen in order to stay safe. OK, now you can see how this takes us away from our divinity because the future does not exist. We create the future from our present moment past thinking. So if I start scenarioing the worst possible case scenario, now I will tell you that if I do therapy and someone is very avoidant of a certain thing happening, we will go into it and vent it so that you're not trapping the resistant energy but that is a therapy-based model of worst case scenario that I do occasionally with people that are very avoidant of the past that I know it's going to project into the future. But that's not what I'm saying for you to do right here. I'm saying that that does not make you a responsible, loving person to worry about your children, to worry about this weekend, to worry about what's going to happen, to worry about your money if you spend this. Because when you do worry about that it's law of assumption that's keeping that neural pathway of i am not safe with money i am not safe with my children i am not safe in this world really like a, a well-driven road that is going to be more difficult for us to to demolish and create a new road so that your energetic highway your awareness can travel on a new road and that will communicate to the body who i am all right so when you have that mindset that is a very masculine to be future driven and preventative driven and providing, I mean, providing and protecting driven living in the future is extremely masculine because the man is building. Okay. Now I don't have a problem with you living in the, the, the presence future or the future presence, but as long as you're choosing the reality that you want to see in the future, not assuming and preparing or playing scenarios. And I know there's a part of you that this feels really good to because you've been doing it your whole life. But I will tell you, it is one of the things that keeps relooping you and relooping you and relooping you. So if you are done with certain abundance patterns or body patterns, that is going to be something that is very important that you pay attention to of where your mind is. Now, when we do thought rehab after Imagineering, that's going to be completely cleaned up. But just having the awareness of it now as you're kind of creating this new you, this new you doesn't have to necessarily worry about what is happening in the future because the present moment is abundant and free and loving and safe. And so that's what the future will be built out of. Okay, everything is built out of you and it's built out of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, 
and your behavior. And I call that a mindset or a state of being. That is the state you live in. So you have states with your body. You have states with your money. You have states with other people. You have states with time. And it's literally how you assume the world is through what you've been in the past. So in order to truly manifest like a master, okay, like a true prosperous being, you cannot use your past as your blueprint. So the butterfly could not become a butterfly by using a caterpillar blueprint. The butterfly builds its own blueprint out of desire for freedom, from space, from from protection, from abundance, from flying high, and it creates it out of desire of contrast. Like, well, I don't want to be this anymore, so I choose to be this. And then there is a whole unbecoming process that happens with the caterpillar to become the butterfly. So if you really want to manifest anything that doesn't have an underbelly negative manifestation attached to it, we literally have to delete the past. Okay, like that old you needs to die off the TV show. You ever watched a TV show and like that actor got fired and they put a new one there? Okay, so that's kind of what we need to do. And your ego is going to look at this and be like, I don't like her, right? And find all these reasons why you shouldn't do this. And that's why I'm giving to you year, for a year. If somehow you forget all about you bought this course and now you're just, it's because your ego does not want you to watch this. If you fall asleep, if you feel irritated by me, that's not me. That is your defense me mechanism wanting to run your program because that's all it knows. And ego's job is the most important thing in ego's universe. And if it does a bad job, then it will die. That's what it believes. Now, it doesn't. It will transform. It will be demoted and promoted for a while while there's a shift change happening. But ultimately, uh, the more that you can get out of your masculine energy, and into your feminine energy, the faster this will happen. Because the self-concept of a masculine is a different species than feminine. Feminine energy is the womb of creation. It is the subconscious. It is, it is the, the abundance of the world. It is the space, okay? It is all of those things that, that you feel kind of like, no, that's just, that's easy. Like you like your space, you like abundance. Like this is just your natural energy. It Feminine energy, her vital energy is the most important thing. So she doesn't live in action. She lives in the present moment. She is curious. She is playful. She is nonsensical. She is light. She is peaceful, right? She is beauty. She is youth, right? She is elegance. She is sophistication. She's art. She's creativity, right? She is, she's this bright, beautiful, inspiring creature. Okay. So the, so feminine energy is inspiring. Okay. And that's what makes men inspired. Okay. Now, when you are not in your feminine energy, you're always looking for inspiration because you are not inspiring yourself. You're looking for something to inspire you because you're in your masculine. Divine feminine is interesting, not interested. Okay. Divine masculine is interested. Interested. Divine feminine is interesting. All right. She's the show. She's the prize. She's the gift. Divine masculine is interested, okay? And that's how co-creation of gender works, all right? So when you are in your masculine energy, your desires, your thoughts, your feelings, your what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you touch will all be out of alignment because you're dominantly focused with testosterone versus estrogen, Okay. This is really important because there might be things that you are trying to manifest that you will not be able to manifest in this self-concept. So divine masculine is focused on three things because divine masculine is focused on the physical world. Okay. Divine masculine is focused on financial security. Okay. How the body looks because that's what's in the physical world, how it looks and its level of success or value. What value is created with yourself? 
which means you have to earn it. You have to be someone, you have to create something, you have to do something in order to have value here. You also have to look a certain way. So women's obsession with how they look is not feminine energy. It is them being in their masculine energy. And because men are visual and we have a paradigm that is very judgmental towards how women look, because you're actually having a male mindset, you are overly judging your own body and others looking at it through male eyes and not even realizing that you're not seeing through the eyes of your divine feminine because divine feminine is not perfect. Divine feminine is nature and nature can be storms and volcanoes and sunshine and rainbows and hurricanes. And that is divine feminine in her true essence. There's never a perfection there. That's a male perspective. Okay. So, and I give you lists and lists and lists of personality traits that I really want you to take, pay attention to, because if you have a very dominant personality trait in your masculine, it is only, it was only there because you were not safe. So when a woman doesn't feel safe, she will shift into her provider, protector, fixer, builder mindset. And then because it's out of alignment with your true authentic self, nothing really seems to work long term in your masculine, which means that I myself have been a very strong woman, very driven, very, very, um, very much a provider, very much a protector, single parent, right? And yet in that masculine drive, because it's unauthentic in my nature of who I really am, like if I didn't have to work so hard, if I had, didn't have to do certain things, then I would be less critical over me. I'd be less critical over money. I would probably need less because I would be in the present moment where all the joy was. But see, when you need a lot, it's because you're future focused and you're uncomfortable in lack. So a lot of shifts happen organically. I'm not saying you're not going to get everything that you want, even if you're leading in that masculine. It will just feel different. It'll feel lighter and more peaceful. And it won't, you won't be living in this procrastination versus perfectionism idea anymore. You won't be literally like giving up because what's the point? You won't be constantly saying it's not fair because women are, they really connect with each other when they're in their feminine. That also means that you'll feel safe with other women. You will stop being competition and it'll be cooperation. So this is all things that are naturally going to happen when you return to your feminine energy. And so before you start scripting and you know designing this new body that you want, I want you to look over the masculine energies and see um, where you are currently self-focused through your self-concept leading in your masculine. Because all ma your masculine tendencies and personality traits are coming from I am not safe. So if you start building a new self-concept in I am not safe, well, what is the underbelly of that desire? It is not safe. So our self-concept is going to come from a place of I am safe, all right, that, that I am the prize. So I give you the masculine traits, and then I give you the I ams for divine feminine for you to cross compare. Now, this is going to be kind of your working list of what is divine feminine in nature and what is divine masculine uh, or what is wounded masculine in the feminine when she's unsafe. We do not want to create a self-concept out of that. And I think that this is where a lot of people in law of attraction are getting it wrong because one of the traits of divine masculine in feminine energy, which is wounded, is going to be obsessive and needy. All right. Now you're like, I'm not obsessive or needy. Yes, you are. If you are in your masculine energy, you are obsessing about someone or something and you are needy, which doesn't mean needing. See, your children need you. OK, but there are some kids that are needy. Needy means no matter what you give, it's not enough. OK, every time you help them, they can't help themselves. All right. So being needy is really cringy. Because it comes from desperate energy of lack. It comes from extreme scarcity. So there's going to be things that were very scarce in childhood that you are going to be unconsciously needy of. And when you are needy of something, it is running away from you. Now, when you are needing something like, hey, I need your help over here. That's different than like obsessive compulsion over something. And some of you are needy on information and spiritual knowledge. And I'm going to tell you why. 
The reason why is divine masculine is mental focused, which means that your intuition when you're in your masculine is not quantum field. It is scarcity. It is circumstantial. It is the world's intuition. It is the collective's intuition. So from you looking at what's intuitive to you, what's inspiring to you is what other people have, what other people have the gifts of that you don't have that you are seeking. So when you are in your mental mind uh, as a woman, you are completely shut off from your divine gifts, which means if you feel like, oh, I don't have my spiritual gifts or I don't have gifts like you do. Yes, you do. But while you're in your masculine self-concept, you don't have access to the feeling state. Then these gifts are in the present moment. They are not in the past or the future. And that's usually where you're running or hiding from. And so if you go into the present moment and, uh, and are safe to feel, you will find gifts that have been right there, right in front of you that you could not see because of your masculine lens, okay? So in that masculine lens, you're going to be leading because of testosterone is a builder. You're going to be thinking that you need help building, that you need to know more, that you need to study. Divine feminine does not need to study. She needs to tap in. She does not need to pursue. She needs to attract. She does not need to ask, right? Because she knows. And if she would get still, that knowing would be there. So really, when we get into scarcity and we are taught to separate from our I am and and, re and replace it with the I am not, then we also lose trust for our own intuition. Because based on our subconscious belief systems, the things that we have chosen and attracted have hurt us. So we can't trust ourselves. So we're calling psychics, we're, we're doing tarot cards because I've made so many mistakes. I can't trust my own desire anymore. And think about if you have a relationship um, wound in scarcity or in lack and you've had to be your masculine. And so relationships haven't been safe for you and you can't be in your feminine energy and, and, and your relationships. Okay, but who's attracting that? And so if there's a scarcity in childhood, feminine energy is going to be naturally more male driven. Okay. So like even the guy who wrote the book, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. He had to literally write a whole nother book because of how the, the world has shifted into becoming asexual. Like women are becoming men and men are becoming women. And here's the thing, when we are not in our true gender, which here's the thing, uh, it's not about what sex you want to be as but if you are like you say okay I, I i feel like i'm a man in a woman's body okay this is probably not the workshop for you because what i want to do is take you back to factory settings of who you are as a creator and there's a reason why gender is very important to be associated with in creation because there's a male role and there's a feminine role and so yes you as a woman can create with your male energy but it will not be sustainable you will create stillborn realities because You'll create what you want, but it will die. It will fall apart because it's not based in, it wasn't created in your womb. It was created in physical reality. And when you are not creating your manifestations in your womb and you're creating everything in physical reality by working really hard, your manifestations won't have a real spiritual connection and they won't be able to generate their own life, which means you'll have to keep it alive. You'll have to work really hard to keep that business alive. You'll have to keep work really hard to keep that relationship alive which means more effort, more mind, more effort, more mind and exhaustion. When you create something divine feminine in your womb first and it becomes realized and it goes through its gestation period and it births itself, it will be forever. It will be sustainable. It will have its own life. It will have its own consciousness. And therefore you won't have to micromanage it. And whatever it is, let's say it's a business, it will be very prosperous because it will be first born in the spirit world and therefore it will have spirit but you see everything i'm telling you was so importantly not taught to you because if you knew this there would be no scarcity in this world because food isn't a scarcity money isn't a scarcity it is only a scarcity to the mindset that we are indoctrinated to and then looking around your physical reality making the choices that you've made out of scarcity Making choices out of intuitive scarcity is going to bring more scarcity. So it doesn't really matter how hard you work or what you do. This is why if you try to diet in scarcity, 
Well, guess what? You're dieting in scarcity, which means that you are going to end up scared and not trusting yourself. And you're going to put a lot of effort in and probably a lot of money. And then you're going to go into the guilt and shame. And then what's the point? And it's not fair. And that is the cycle. So if you just are willing to look over this list with me and understand that there, that it's not just as, see, the thing is, is it is so dire that you get back into your feminine energy for vitality, health, and creation, because your body will not be able to sustain the male energy for long. Like as soon as you hit menopause, it is going to be excruciatingly uncomfortable if you are in your masculine energy, because the body is now shifting completely paradigms and going into a whole new role. And if you are still leading in the physical world, like you're still working really hard, you're still doing a lot. That's not the energy or area of a crone. The crone is the medicine woman. She is taken care of and adored. She's a matriarch. And if you are still having to hustle and bustle out here, then your body is going to literally start going crazy at you. And I see this all the time. Like my body is just attacking me in menopause, but you've been in your masculine because you're not safe. Now, why are you not safe? I'm sure you could tell me 10 reasons right now why your world is not safe. You could tell me about the matrix. You could tell me about the government. You can tell me about money. You can tell me about food. You can tell me about plastics and pharmaceuticals and your parents and all this stuff. And I could say, okay, but everything is you pushed out. Everything is a reflection of you. And there are people having realities right now with the same exact scenario, living completely prosperous lives. And none of those things are affecting them. All right. So you have to take responsibility that everything that you are afraid of that is keeping you in your masculine energy and keeping you stuck and blocked is actually coming from your childhood mindset, which is what we have to change. So I've given you the new I am and new feminine, and I've given you the, the masculine list, okay? And it's all the things that, the, the things you do say and act like when you are in masculine energy so you can really tell. Um and I would say that maybe maybe it's not a hundred percent. Maybe you've been working on this, and you're you're only you're only dealing with a couple of like you only jump into your masculine around money, or you only have to shift into your masculine around your family. Great, okay. But small changes make huge quantum leaps here. So regardless, just take stock on you know go through circle on the list where you are on that, and then look at the I am divine feminine looks and look at how a contrast. And how much easier it is to be you in your physical reality. And yes, it is fair for men because they love the doing world. We love the being world, the being the prize, the being the gift, the being magnetic. And you're saying, oh, I love hard work. Okay, that's because you're in your masculine. But I will tell you that you will continue to have stillborn manifestations that way especially if you go big, I'm not talking about maybe little things, but if you create big projects out of your masculine energy, it is because 90% of it was built in the physical world and the physical world is dying all the time. It's organic. So it's destructive. If you build it in the spirit world, it is sustainable. It will last generations. Your business will last years and years and years. And that see, this is what happened to me is I was very intuitive in my business or in my channeling but in my business, I was in my masculine. So I was building a spiritual business out of a masculine energy and it just kept falling apart. It kept falling apart. I was going further and further into debt because I kept investing in myself, but only in the physical world. I wasn't doing hours of imagineering work. I was doing hours of investment calls and closing deals and signing people up and looking at properties and doing all these things. And basically it turned out to be a stillborn process that was very heartbreaking like losing a child and that is when I said I've got to go all the way with my feminine energy I've got to get back to creating from the womb and then allowing it its gestation time and patience is excruciating to divine masculine that's why I've created practice prepare play platforms for us to never feel like we're waiting and I've created things for the ego to do so it won't get bored during this process because it really is going to be a complete 180 of what you do, what you say, what you think and how you feel for the next 90 days if you do this right, which means you're not going to have you're not going to have access to the old negative thinking mind the way that um, that you did before once you start Imagineering. It will feel different once you Imagineer. And what, what Imagineering is me taking you into your true, authentic spirit world 
so that you can get to meet your higher self and live in the life as her, with her, through her, and time travel some earlier events to change those as well and create future events, plant seeds in the future for yourself, create new relationships, create new playgrounds, create new bodies. But if you do this in the physical world with a scarcity mindset, no diet will work. Now, here's the second reason why I want the whole culture back into the correct gender. Not only are we going to be dealing with in the next 30 years, extreme fertility issues with this divine masculine leading. I mean, why do you think there's so much IVF? It's like it, you, people go, oh, it's the food. It's the food. No, it's it's actually your hormonal structure. And that all it's all created, but thoughts create the hormones. Okay, so in order for us to get sick from poisonous food, we have to be in a sick mindset because we're alchemists. So you could eat horrible things. And if you weren't in a scarcity, sick mindset, you would never get sick ever, 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 ever ever. Okay. And that's where I want to take you, right? You are not a victim of physical reality. Physical reality is just mental thoughts materialized. Okay. And there, it's, it's not sustainable out there. It's always falling apart constantly in order to keep something alive out there. It has to be spirit driven. That's why humans can sustain because they're spirit driven, but something that's, you know, you leave some table out in the weather, it's going to last. You destroy something, it's not going to last. And eventually your body won't last in your masculine because what you're doing is, is you're destroying your GPS, which is your, your guidance center, your true desires of what it is to be feminine and create as a feminine. And you're destroying your ability to be joyful and peaceful in the present moment because you are never safe. And so you can't be still, you can't, you can't know enough. You can't do enough. You can't have enough. And so that's going to lead your whole life and it's going to steal your joy and it is going to make you unhappy. Even if you, go, wait, I am happy. So it's going, it's be a very big contradiction. The other thing is, is that there's a lot of things that women don't understand that are destroying you by being in your masculine energy. And I'm going to, I'm going to share this right now. So I think I'll talk about this in, in the Monday mindset. And basically it has to do with your, your sexuality and your sexual relationships. So when a woman is in her masculine energy, okay, and she is having intercourse with her partner. Well, let's say it's her husband, all right? When she has an intercourse with her husband and she's in her masculine energy, then what is happening is, see, a man and a woman's dynamic back in the caveman days in order to survive when these bodies were, well, even before that, when our bodies were originated, um, the blueprint of the human is actually quite primitive. And the idea was that man was not going to be built to, to live in his emotion because living in his emotion would keep him from being very present and future focused. Emotions would slow him down. It would cause him to judge and worry. It would cause many, many survival issues for a man to feel. Okay. Now when, but because he's a human and he's having feelings, then what would happen is his divine partner, when he would ejaculate or have, you know, sex with his partner, she would receive that emotional download from him because divine feminine is emotional and it's the womb of creation. And so she can transcend that, transmute all the pain. Let's say he saw his best friend die last week. Okay, he's having a real hard time at work. He's really suffering with something outside of himself, but he can't process it because he's in the middle of hunting for his family or you know, just lost his child or something. He can't feel that. But it's actually not his nature to feel it because then he he actually starts to build more estrogen when he is in his feelings and it starts making him become a woman. All right. So this perfect divine union, and this is why the indoctrination wants you in your masculine and wants men in their feminine, because when a when a man will download basically and, and charge his energy from what he just lost out into the world with his partner, she would receive the emotional download. Now, what this was, how this was good and beneficial for her is that when men and women did not talk the way they do now, like they were not best friends, they were partners, right? And yes, they would inter inter exchange and they had connection, but they weren't venting about work and venting about that and constantly doing that. So this was a way for her to know him. 
because she could feel empathically all of his trials from that week. And that would give her a sense of compassion and intuitively knowing him on a level where he couldn't communicate. And so she would then experience that non-connect, not like taking it on, not like empaths do now, but empathically she would have that experience to know him. And then she would turn that into life force energy. Okay. And as long as her estrogen is balanced, you are doing that for your husband. Now, let's say you are in your masculine energy. Okay. And, and he is, let's just say he's in his masculine energy. It's probably not, but when he charges with you and downloads his stuff, okay, he is not just downloading his emotional garbage. He is downloading the essence of who he is, his DNA, his strengths, his weaknesses, his limits, his childhood, his subconscious mind, his hopes, his dreams, also his body issues. So let's say he has diabetes, okay? And you're you're having sex with him, but you're in your masculine but, and because you are masculinely charged, like you're leading from your testosterone, you do not, you do not transcend him. You become him. I need you to hear this. Not only will you eventually take on his body issue, you will take on some of his subconscious pain and you will begin to mirror back to him not what he wants to see because see when he comes to you it's to let go it's to recharge all right and if you are not able to let him go of it because it's now it it's like literally it's becoming you you're taking on women have this it's just this intuitive process as soon as you get in a relationship with a man you take on his hobbies or you you get to know his interests because that's how you adapt to the the container that is designed to lead you safely so you can be free energetically to create whatever he gives you into a bigger way. And see, feminine energy is a grower. So there's a lot of times where a woman will take on the energy of a man's suppressed body issues and she will have the cancer. She will have the issue because she's in her masculine, which means she doesn't feel safe with him. So she's in, so she's, cut. so in nature, what you try to do, and I know I did this as a child, is you become you become what scares you in order to protect yourself. It's like fight, flight, freeze, fawn, friend. And so in nature, if you can't fight, if you can't fight, right, and, and you will friend it, which means you will become it. So like when I would get triggered before I went through my healing experience or my awakening, I would act like my mom when I would get triggered, which was the scariest thing in the world. And I didn't even know I was acting like that. But you become what hurts you in order to adapt to the environment to protect yourself okay so you literally shape shift into this man's issues problems and subconscious so now not only do you have your baggage you have his baggage and this is what builds this unconscious resentment and this heaviness and this almost intuitive like i don't want to sleep with him because you realize you're taking it all on all right you literally are you cannot transcend it because you're not leading in feminine energy. And so you are you are having to do everything energetically. So the woman is going to have to, if she's living in her masculine, the only way that she can purify her body is to constantly do detoxes, to constantly talk about her issues, to constantly um, exercise, to, to move the energy out. Otherwise, she'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because she doesn't have a place to put it either because she's in her masculine, which is She's separated from her feeling space and she's in the mental space because feelings have hurt her. And so she's shutting down from her feelings. And only when a woman is in her flow in her feelings, can she just go, oh, this was a horrible week. I'm going to love it. I'm going to send love back as a healer and an empath, compassionate love that I'm going to, I'm going to energetically send back to him. He's going to feel the charge of that. He's going to let go of that so that he can go build and protect and provide. And then I'm going to turn that into usable, sustainable energy. And that just doesn't happen in our culture anymore. And so this, you're taking on the baggage of this man. Now, let's say you're single. Okay. And let's say you're having casual experiences or your relationships are only lasting a couple of months at a time, or you have someone that you sleep with because, you know, 
It's a friends with benefits situation. I want you to take to heart what I just said, because now what happens? Okay, so let's imagine this. Let's imagine I'm in a marriage, all right? And I'm in my masculine because I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe how he reacts when I need something. I don't feel safe with the world. I don't feel safe with our finances. I don't feel safe with his family, whatever. I'm in my masculine. And, you know, we're having an intimate relationship. And so he is gifting me the emotions that he doesn't process or feel. He is giving me his body issues. He's giving me his baggage. And now I am, because I'm a female, I'm going to give him energy back. Okay. But I'm going to take on his energy. Now, this is a fair exchange in the primitive reality. Here's why. You think, what is a woman getting out of this, right? What a woman is getting out of this when she's in her true gender role and he is in his true gender role is that he understands intuitively what a gift she is, that she is the prize, that without her, he would completely go mad with his mind. He understands the value of the service she is providing out of unconditional love. And he knows that when he has makes love with her, that he feels new, that he feels emotional free. And so that is the gift. All right. And see, I'm always saying feminine energy is the gift. But see, you're walking around thinking, oh, I got to give sex because that's my obligation, but I still have to earn a living and I have to do this and this and this. And I will tell you that when you are not allowing him or a, uh, um, uh, you know, creating that equal exchange and he is not providing for you and taking care of you in that way, the energy exchange is very off and you will resent him and he will be, he will not respect you because he's not able to do what he's designed to do, which is provide and protect you. And if he becomes the reason you need protection, that is going to add a lot more onto your body. Okay, so this is happening. This is biology. And you're hearing all this divine feminine training. No one is talking about the hormonal destruction that is happening with intimacy when a woman is in her masculine energy. This is serious, okay? And if this doesn't make you want to get back to your feminine energy, I don't know what will, because this eventually will ruin your physical body because you have nowhere to put this. This is why you're always like, should I do a detox? Should I do a cleanse? And maybe they're not, maybe they're not having a physical experience, but DNA of a man will stay in your body for seven years. So how many partners have you had in seven years? You are with no, with, it's almost like no child support for what they dumped into you. Nothing, nothing. They have given you nothing. Okay. And see, this is what makes men become situational ship because they do not need to provide for you. They do not need to protect you because you're a strong woman but they can still dump on you. And then because you're in your masculine, they don't want to come back to you because when they come back to you, they feel them. They don't, they feel the mirror of themselves and they're turned off by you. This is what casual sex does. So ladies, if you're doing this casual sex thing, good luck with your health because you're not going to be able to mentally overcome the actions of physical reality in a mindset of unsafety because in order for this to happen you have to believe that i'm not safe you have to believe that you are unsafe for you to attract any of that for you to attract a man that does not know the power of a woman does not respect a woman's energy who does not provide and protect for you you are absolutely getting nothing except more scarcity because you don't have access to your divine intuition you have to study you cannot release emotionally because you're not in your flow. So you have to do it manually. And so women just get bigger and bigger and sicker and sicker. And the guy is happier and happier. And his self-love is increasing because he doesn't have to take any responsibility. And all these women are wanting to sleep with him, you know, because of the daddy issues that is making the women pursue and chase. And this is where our culture is, okay? Now, obviously, I'm, I'm projecting a little bit because, like, I've gone through this and I didn't realize the biology of what is happening to you in your masculine energy. So when you are thinking about who you are in your marriage, I don't want you to be like, I'm not going to do it anymore with him. This is not his fault, okay? Whatever you, whatever, however you teach people to treat you is your fault. And we'd all done this because this is the way we were raised to believe, that sex was our obligation, that sex would maybe help them love us, 
or whatever, but ultimately it is such a powerful energy exchange that when it is not done from feminine and masculine energy is very destructive on the human body. And it is very destructive on the mindset because when now you have all his worries and his doubts and his fears, but there's a, there's another um, wound that happens with becoming your abuser, but also becoming addicted to your abuser because you've taken so much of his energy on his insecurities, his doubts. Now you don't have the self-confidence to go on your own. You don't believe in yourself anymore because you're streaming his unconsciousness, his insecurities. So now you have yours and his, and it's like, you feel like you, like you don't look enough, but this is why you guys, by getting into your feminine energy and we rebalance your hormones, first of all, this will stop happening. Your body will start transcending everything inside of it. All right. Everything inside of it. I mean, you will become, you have not done too much damage. I can promise you that because the 48 years, I realized this and within one year cleaned all this mess up. All right. All of it. And started taking the clock backwards. And I'm healthier than anyone I know, including my adult children. So it's all changeable. But you've got to change the mindset that keeps you in your masculine energy. Being in your feminine energy and regulating estrogen is going to bring you a sense of happiness. Because estrogen, when it is balanced, creates more serotonin. Serotonin is the I am safe hormone that is in your gut. And that's why you have gut issues. That's why you have digestive issues is because your estrogen and your testosterone are so out of whack that it fries the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands work on the thyroid. The thyroid creates your, like, if your thyroid is jacked, your beauty is jacked because it's just like it's just, oh, your hair, your eyebrows, your skin, it's all affected. This is all coming from one belief system of I am scarcity or I am in scarcity of what? Of what? So- we don't fix this with hormones. The hormones will fix through the thoughts. But we do have to practice what it means to be in our feminine energy. And so I have a huge list of ways to return back to your feminine energy throughout the day so that you can start sh shifting this around. Getting you back into a healthy estrogen testosterone, your weight is going to regulate. Half of your body problems are going to go away. And the other ones will go away within the heater. Because balanced hormones is a balanced body, which means a balanced nervous system, a balanced immunity, a balanced blood system, a balanced limp. Okay. So think of hormones as the soundtrack of your thoughts. And every time you have a thought, whether it's real or not, you're having the chemical reaction that is either making you or breaking you. So if you do not address your safety issues in this course, then you will create a reality out of scarcity that feels exciting because your desires are coming from lack. So when we start working on the self-concept, which we will in this next video that goes with this, then you're gonna go, oh, right, okay. So I'm, I'm building this self-concept out of divine feminine energy, not out of masculine lack and not out of physical world, but out of spirit world desires that, that will, those will be eternal and they will not be stillborns, which means no more hard work on manifestation for it to just, disappear. All right. So stay tuned for the next video.